Uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's fine now. You can see it. Hey, okay. And we're live. One more minute. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's fine now. Oh. Great. Now, Michelle, if you could share the link to your paper, that'd be great. Uh, yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Good morning, everyone. Slight change of plans. You get to see me again today. <laughs> Over on YouTube. I put the PDF because you know it's not open access. I don't even know if science is doing an open access. Uh -huh. Sorry, Mish. Uh, that link. Let me double check. Think, yeah, that's your CNRS personal link. Oh, that sure. Won't work for the rest of the world. <laughs> How about um, if I give you the doy? Right. Uh, wait a minute. There you go. It'll work. Sorry about that. Um, no problem. Well. Tack, tack. And I'll, uh, I'll put the PDF again for the people who came later. Okay, welcome to New China, everyone. Uh, uh, sorry, not enough sleep. Um, the way it works is you come, uh, everyone is welcome, you come and present a paper or a book or a book chapter or a YouTube science video, whatever you want that got you excited and you tell us why you're excited about it and we have a chat about it. Uh, today Michelle is going to present the paper that you can already see on the screen from uh, science and Michelle you know how it works so just take it away. All right, this paper has been published last year, but still very recent. It's about using the glial framework to reveal the white matter fiber architecture in human and primate brains. As you may know, uh, our colleagues that are using, um, uh, doing wet science and slicing the brain to study its anatomy usually use nissel staining to stain the body of cells in the brain. It's usually used to explore the cortex and the cito architecture organizations. Typically, this is what the group in Julish is doing to separate the brain in different cito architectural areas. So areas that show a structure of neurons that is different across the uh, six layers of the cortex. But much less attention has been paid to the white matter with this kind of uh, uh, staining. So in the white matter, you don't really have neurons. Well, you have the axons that are part of the neurons, but you don't have really cell bodies of neurons. You have glial cells, and particularly in the white matter of the brain, you have uh, oligodendrocytes, which is a cell that connect different axons um, and particularly connect like the, the, the glee around the, the myelin around the axons to allow their fast conduction. Um, and so the idea was to look at the organization of these uh, 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 glial cells that you can see here. And uh, so what they notice is actually the glial cells follow the main direction of the white matter pathways. So because they because they connect several axons, you know, you don't have one glial cell per axon, they connect several. 
but they actually do follow this direction. So they're like, oh, this is interesting. Kind of remember people doing that with water. How about we try to fit a tensor in there? Uh, which they did over here, as you can see, and they could find and extract uh, some kind of orientation in the brain or in a brain slice. And you can see here an entire brain uh, uh, where the orientation is, is selected according to a, a RGB uh, color pattern. And you can see that the uh, fiber of the corpus callosum uh, project from the midsection uh, to the lateral portion here. So for those of you who don't know really about neuroanatomy, you might be, well, this is nice color and all, but how do I know it's true? Um, so that's what they did in the next slice, slide over here, where they compare the method of uh, NISL ST, I guess, I don't know what it stands for, but it's a form of tractography of the oligodendrocyte alignment. That's how we're gonna call it. Uh, for now, with polarized light imaging, which is a different method that look at uh, the orientation of the white matter using uh, the biofringence property of the myelin. And I'm going to go uh, through the technical here, but that gives you uh, the orientation of the uh, myelination of the axons. Um, what looks to be a terrible tractography or RGB map of diffusion weighted imaging people compare, I always use the best I see. <laughs> um, and so when you look at the three next to each other, you see a form of coherence that is particularly highlighted for three areas. You have here like the corpus callosum, when you can see that the fibers are, are nicely going from a red, which is left-right orientation, to a yellow, which is uh, uh, like oblique, Throughout the top orientation, whether this is in the nissel staining, polarized light imaging, or diffusion weighted imaging. Um, if you go a little lower over here, you will be uh, uh, in the internal capsule, or you'll be a little bit lower than the internal capsule, but like in the projection system, you can see some uh, fibers reaching out to uh, uh, what looks to be the thalamus over here. And you have the same over here with the initial staining, along with diffusion weight imaging with this resolution. You don't see much, but that's green with the, as, as for the rest. And then a little lower here, you have uh, uh, this uh, magnification of an area, which is right next to, right next to the hippocampus. Up, oh, what happened? Come back. Um, where they highlight with a little arrows over here, what I think. I'm sorry, I didn't have so much time to uh, reread the paper. Is a performant track, perforant track, as uh, that is going through the white matter to connect uh, the hippocampus. Uh, apologize if this is not the right track, but I think that's what it is. And you can see again that you can find it with as uh, an initial staining tractography, oligodendrocyte tractography, polarized light imaging. And uh, I don't know what happened here with diffusion, but we have we have better diffusion at home. Um, anyway, so um, it looks like it's working, and that's great because uh, initial staining of brain slice there is a lot of that in the entire world, and every lab has actually uh, uh, initial staining of brain slice, so you can actually get the slice, apply this algorithm, which is open access. Mm -hmm. Um, um, and extract the orientation of white matter on different slides. Uh, they did some additional analysis that were of interest because we do know uh, that um, uh, white matter can get a little messy in some areas. So you have this indicator of uh, messiness, which here is called coherence. Uh, uh, as you know, like in this, in this area of crossing, you have crossing of the uh, corpus callosum with a corona radiator and association fibers. And you see that you have little coherence here because you have a lot of crossing between fibers. Um, an important uh, uh, specification that I forgot to mention, um, mostly, so they do that on, on the images of the staining. And uh, those images are like, you know, between one and 20 micron resolution. 
um, uh, be, but because they have to feed the tensor and there is some uh, uh, requirement of how much data you got to accumulate to fit your tensor, uh, technically the orientation is estimated at a resolution of 50 micron on the plane and not across the plane, which is one of the limitations of the method is like you'll have those nice images, but always on the plane of the postmortem sections, you never have a 3D tractogram unless you manage to align everything together very well, which is really, really hard. Um, and then like uh, an important dimension that it, that is highlighted often in papers, is like, you know, how is this replicable from one brain to another one? And, and across species, and you can see here a nice demonstration that one human compare quite well with the organization of the white matter of another human, so that compare quite well with the organization of the white matter of another species, which is a rhesus macaque, and here you have the velvet macaque, and you have the corresponding uh, uh, nissel stain white matter here, where you can clearly see the alignment of the oligodendrocytes. So this is it's crazy that nobody actually ever did that before. And um, and here's the estimation of the tensor. And then like, um, I think that's it, uh, fab orientation distribution here. And that's it. As I said, the code is, uh, is openly available. Um, you know, there is tons of data with needs still standing available out there. Uh, so if I had another life or if I was not, if I didn't need to sleep, I would jump on it and start doing it systematically uh, with any kind of nissel staining I can put my hand on, um, but I don't have the time for that. So um, I wish somebody does it, particularly in Jellish where they have 10 brains, 10 human brains with like all the slice with nissel staining. And I do things big brain, is also nissel stain, if I remember well. So it's totally possible to do an entire brain. That's it, folks. Well, Question. So cool. Also, just for those who watch us over on YouTube, feel free to write your questions and I'll bring them over here. Victor has a question. Yes, so cool. that's your name today. <laughs> <laughs> yes, all right. Uh, so it's just uh, a little question that I had that is more about the other techniques that are available compared to this one, like the, um, especially uh, the, uh, the PLI. Mm -hmm. uh, I wonder, can you do uh, this, uh, this technique uh, in the middle with uh, the same uh, slices that have been stained or is it to be uh, like really prepared for this specifically and once it's stained or something else it's done and you have to use this uh, other method yes yes so like the great power of pli is you can use uh any any data set that you already uh, acquire if you have the brain slice and you didn't destroy the myelin you can use polarized light imaging on it but it will cost you because you have to build your polarized light imaging machine or buy it. And All right, so true. According to whether you build it yourself or you buy it, it will be, I guess, between 20,000 or 100,000 uh, euros, dollars, whatever. The thing with this NISO oligodendrocyte tractography is you don't need any tool, it's all computers. True. So uh, you get uh, the image, that is, you know, just a staining image that people have been recording or, or, or capturing, and and it's digital, and you just you just run your algorithm on it. Okay, and I wonder about what kind of uh, application can this have exactly? Because it has a lot of limitations. It's it's really nice that we can get this kind of result. I'm actually quite impressed. But I wonder, what do you think are the direct application that you have for this kind of thing? Well, okay, so I'll, you know, I'll reply to your question by another question, which would be what would be the application of mapping the situ architecture of the brain in postmortem? Um, 
not much besides trying to understand the organization of oh, the no. brain. I, I did not uh, mean. I did uh, not mean. Uh, uh, like, sorry, I did not mean like application uh, in a uh, like medicine or anything. I mean in the, for science-based stuff, just knowing oh, more yeah. about the brain. Well, how can yeah. we extract uh, useful information to know more about the brain just with that? Okay, so so you do know like uh, uh, tractography, and we all know that. And neuroimaging in general is highly limited. So we have uh, with tractography, for example, we have this problem of false positive, false negative. What are what is a true connection? What is not? We've been validating what we find with using clinical postmodern dissections, but we crucially missing a good gold standard because we, we cannot use axonal tracing in monkeys because the human brain is not a monkey brain. There's like fundamental differences. Um, so we need a method to try to look, to look at this. And unfortunately, the polar light imaging is not accessible to all. You have to invest money in there to, to be able to do it. Plus there is some extra, it's not easy to do. I've seen, I've seen the presentation of Calamila, it's beautiful. Uh, so the, Calamila is one person who actually decided to invest in polarized light imaging after it's been discovered. Uh, she's doing a fantastic job, but she always finished her presentation saying that it was really hard to reach that level and those images because there is a lot of unexpected. And the great advantage with this practically is that you can, you can just use what is already there and run the algorithm and check whether your connection does exist at a higher resolution uh, than diffusion weighted imaging. And it does not rely on what are properties. It rely on a different property, which is a better validation than uh, Klinger that gonna use water properties to separate bundles of fibers. So you have a, a better gold standard. The limitation is really that it is only you know, slice by slice and to concatenate it is really challenging. So you probably won't be able to extract a knife off right now with this, but you can look at small connectivity. And if you have the right slice, you can see, for example, the frontal Aslan track. Um, and those are, those are important uh, steps for us to uh, validate the work that we're doing in the living human brain. Thank you. Yep. I have a question about the indicator of messiness, as you called it. <laughs> it's coherence. Uh, coherence. But I thought yeah. messiness is like easier to remember. <laughs> uh, um, so what, what are we actually looking at? Is it how, how much the fibers disperse? Is it how aligned they are? Is it the amount of crossing? What exactly is the messiness that you're referring to? So, you know, I've specified in the, in the caption here, low value indicate um, a tile of incoher incoherent orientation. So a lot of fiber uh, crossing, and as we know, in the centrum semi we, we have a lot of this. Um, so typically here, it'll be, it'll be a region where you have a lot of crossing and inside your tile, you have many different directions that can be represented here as being messy and a value close to zero. In, in the very hot areas like this, you can see here that you have a better alignment of your side and the overall orientation in your tile of uh, uh, fiber orientation estimation is actually less complex, less rich, you have like less orientation in there and so you have a higher value there. That's about it. Thank you. Any other question? Yes, Avi. Go ahead, Avi. Yes. Thank you, Michel, for, for the presentation. Uh, just a, a, a naive, uh, naive question. Uh, so how does it work? So. The, the pictures I showed, and I didn't read the, the paper, but it seemed that the, it, it works pretty well on the X and Y axis, but I'm wondering uh, on the thickness of the slice, if you go deeper uh, in the slice, mm -hmm. if the orientation in the Z axis will be um, 
uh, as uh, as high as uh, the the on the x and y resolution so i don't know if it is better in these resolutions and it's why they showed in this resolution or if there is a bias in the no there is you have to you right there is a prime there is a bias you can't um you can't go in three dimension you only see in two dimensions actually a knowledge at the end of the paper so okay. you can see only tracks that are in the x and y so the mm -hmm. the, the perfect okay so I get, I exactly know. like polarized light imaging although with polarized light imaging now they're trying to find a way to go in the third direction but um okay it's not ready yet unless you have a postmortem section that is you know sagittal or axials and you you know then you will see but i'm afraid uh yeah this is a main limitation okay that can be covered like you know if somebody does the entire big brain and um you know because it's already realigned they already did the job of realigning everything they can they can probably do we we'll probably see an entire tractogram coming up based on big brain or at least i hope it would be great thanks leah i have a question uh yes it's a question comment in the picture that you show where uh, the needs uh, the polarized light uh, and the um, uh, tensor tractography, the diffusion is shown. For me, it was surprising how, uh, yes, you know, that. Uh, yeah, I know what happened. Just moved away. That one. Okay, this one. Uh, for me, it's surprising because when you do the staining, no, uh, you just do an optical image then of your stain. I never uh, done. It's not like in diffusion, you really measure the signal. So it seems that more we go. Uh, towards like just an uh, like an optical with a camera image, the better is the resolution, and then we can apply this algorithm. So for me, it's surprising this because usually in diffusion you apply the the tensor modeling when you have really the diffusivity of uh, the water, so the, the signal, and uh, here you apply this tensor in just an optical image basically. Or I didn't get it. Yeah. Um... So for the technical part, um, so what they do, so you see how it's getting darker with the staining. So they don't do it pixel wise. They take like a group of pixels, and thanks to the group of pixels, they can detect the main orientation of all this staining on which they fit. I think it's the tensor, yeah. They look for the principal orientation using a tensor model. That's it. Okay, because if you look to the a group, okay, to a group, it's more towards the step after. So it's more the tractography step in the diffusion than the tensor that is. A... Yeah, well, technically there is no tractography in there. So it's just uh, RGB maps. But um, yeah, well, if I remember that they use a tensor to fit and detect the orientation, but maybe they used a different. Now for we me, it was surprising this, this is a step that it's really, um, I didn't, I never think in this way to apply the, ten, it's like in an in optical, yeah, I, I don't know how to say, but with a camera, but it's not really. See, like, uh, you see, for example, um, your morpho space on which you run a PCA to detect a cluster. Mm-hmm. But this will give you a main component that will be like a, a, a giving you the orientation of of small local estimates of of your oligodendrocyte because it's white in the background and black. Yeah, and I think they really use this contrast between the white and uh, and yeah, and black and follow the lines of these blacks. Uh... Yeah, that's what that's what uh, that's what they do. But yeah, it's a concept. Yeah, conceptually, it's really different from the fitting in diffusion it. because it's more well, an optical thing. Well, yeah, yeah, it's an optical thing rather than a radio thing. And one may say that according to how long you leave your nissel staining, it will be darker or lighter. Um, mm -hmm. I, yeah, I hear you, um, but it works. And I'm glad no, to and have indeed more, I was surprised. 
Yeah, I'm glad people are going more like uh, to this like hybrid, bringing you know postmortem staining next to neuroimaging, trying to see you know does it fit? Does it doesn't fit? Can we can we validate? Go further with this? You know, it's, I think it's it's really good. No, yeah, it seems in the comparison is uh, even better in the resolution than. Uh... I'm just kind of uh, offended. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> By this map here. Uh, that remind me when Carzides was showing the comparison between his polarized light imaging and tractography, and he had this image of tractography that was highly offensive to people doing tractography. <laughs> it was like, I can send you better than this. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, I see. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, honestly, I don't know where they got this because it's really ugly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, you have uh, on HCP data that you have like much better resolution stuff. I know. Why? Free, so. Why? I, you know, maybe they, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe, uh, I don't know. I don't know why they did that. Probably they don't know how to do diffusion wave imaging and they managed to put that together. That's it. Listen, if they are experts in this staining, it's easy to then combine expertise. You don't have to be able to do it that all. That is right. <laughs> that is right. So that's beautiful work, really. Uh, it's a new method. It's going to help. Fundamentally it gets the point help. across. So it's... It's yeah. good enough for what it needs to be. Not That's everyone right. is spending years to perfect their uh, tractography. <laughs> well, there is this problem of uh, not having a gold standard, and um, you know, it's necessary. So now, how how do you know how far off you are? And it does apply to many other things like cortical thickness or fMRI. How far off are you from the real thing? One day we'll know. <laughs> but for today, for today, this is all we have time for. <laughs> Don't see any more questions, any any pressing issues, questions, comments? No? Okay, in that case, thank you very much for presenting this fantastic paper, Michelle. Um, thank you all for being here, and we'll see you next week, Monday, and I think Hervé is presenting next week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it right? Well, if you're ready. <laughs> Final paper, okay. <laughs> yes. And this is how you get assigned. <laughs> Voluntold. <laughs> Right. Thank you all for being here. Have an exciting week in science and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.